Today I would like to show you something pretty neat. You can change the appearance and the behavior of your color wheel docker. Hello and welcome back. Let's not waste any time and let's get started. Click on this shortcut button. This will take you directly to the docker's control panel. Before, to get to this control panel, you would have to go to Settings, Configure Krita, and the Color Selector Settings button was right there. So basically, we now have access to the same settings by clicking on the shortcut button. The only difference here is that the settings come on their own floating panel. You can change the appearance of your color selector. Let's uh, choose the uh, square one. Leave the rest alone. The default settings are fine for what we need to do as illustrators or beginners. However, obviously, if you are familiar with uh, color adjustments, you are more than welcome to change any of those settings. Same thing here. Leave all the default settings as they are. No need to tweak anything here. This tab allows you to change the appearance of your minimal shade selector. Right now, the settings are set to gradient. And you can see it right beneath the main color wheel. You can choose to see this gradient as a color patches if you want. If you choose the gradient look, you can change the number of lines you see underneath the color wheel. You can choose how high you want the lines to be. I think uh, 10 pixels uh, is a good size. Just like before, you can change the line count and the line height of your color patches. Here you can decide how many color patches you want within a line. Now be careful, the more patches you add, the smaller they look. So I'm going to choose 10 patches, that looks like a good number. Leave this to minimal and leave the other default settings the way they are. A color history means that every time you use a paint color on a project, a new color patch will be created right underneath the minimal shade selector gradient. So first we need to check this box to activate the properties. In this area, you can change the appearance of your patches. You can make them higher, wider, and you can decide of the maximum number of patches you want to see per row. In this section, you can decide where you want to see your color history to display in the color wheel docker. And I like mine to show as two horizontal rows. Of course, you are more than welcome to choose more rows if you want. All right, we are almost done. Time to activate the properties of our last tab, the Colors from Image tab. This will allow you to extract the colors of an already existing image. So just like earlier, you can change here the appearance of your patches. Since our color history is going to be displayed as two horizontal rows, I'll choose to have my extracted color patches to be displayed as one vertical row. The color patches will appear on that side of the docker. So we are done, click OK. This is the new look of our color wheel docker. So let's test the color history. I have already selected a brush and a size. And as I test different colors, you will see patches of colors appear underneath the three rows of gradient. I have this cute little baby dragon. 
I would like to extract the colors from the image to be able to reuse them later. So for this to happen, the only thing I need to do is click on this button. And here they are. You can change the background of your color wheel. To do so, click on the shortcut. Check this box and click anywhere on this little window. You can select a new color from the color wheel or any of the color swatches. Remember that you have many color palettes at your disposal. Finally, you can choose the color picker and pick a color from an image. Let's do that. Click OK twice. And voila! We are done for today. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time for another tutorial. Until then, au revoir et à bientôt.